Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I have a reactive load amp that I made for a guitar amplifier. I've been building tube guitar amplifiers on and off for the last five-ish years, and I wanted a way to play without needing to have a speaker cabinet hooked up, uh, just so it's not loud all the time when I'm testing, especially in a lab environment with like an oscilloscope and, and that sort of thing hooked up. I didn't want to have to be actively driving it through a speaker. Uh, you can check out the link in the video description below. I wrote a Hackaday article that was actually published by them about this project. Uh, it was more than just building the box. It also went into a lot of detail about the construction and testing of inductors because that was the biggest problem with this project. So looking at the load box we have here, uh, to start out, we have a resistor in the back here. It's a 6.8 ohm power resistor. And then we have two different inductors. So these are what make this box, instead of a resistive box, a reactive box. Uh, this inductor here is the large one, and it was designed by tearing the copper wire out of a 120 and 12 volt transformer and rewinding it with 28 gauge copper wire. Now it's borderline as far as its performance. I actually needed a slightly larger transformer, but I didn't know that at the time. Uh, it was hard to do those types of calculations without actually building one and trying it. And then we have a smaller inductor over here that's just wire wound toroid. And I clipped it onto the side of this case with a screw and a popsicle stick to add some compression. Next, we have this custom circuit board. And what that is getting us is a lithium ion battery and a little charger for it. So you can charge this off 12 volts and then a power op amp. And really that's there to drive a headphone load. I also have a hi-fi type treble and bass control just to make some adjustments depending on the pair of headphones or, or line out, et cetera, that you're driving into. And then the volume switch here uh, this sets the output volume as well as it also turns it the power on and off to the unit. Um, so on the front, we have the faceplate, obviously, with little dials. And then in the back here, we have pretty typical just line in for 8 ohms, uh, line out. And that 12-volt power, which is really for charging the lithium-ion battery. And the big reason I wanted to put a battery on this is I didn't want to create any noise from a power supply or ground loop problems, etc. So why is this a reactive versus resistive load box? Uh, resistive load boxes just have a giant resistor usually. They're cheap and easy. They represent a 8 ohm, 4 ohm, 16 ohm load to whatever your amplifier is. And regardless of the frequency that that amplifier puts out, it's going to have a consistent load the whole time. Reactive load boxes, because they have capacitors and inductors in them, actually the load shifts quite a bit based on the frequency. And that's what happens with a real speaker. If you look on the screen here, we have a diagram of an actual output impedance from an eminence speaker. And you'll notice that there's a peak around 100 hertz. That's the resonant peak of a speaker. Every speaker is going to have that peak. And at that peak, you can get a lot of energy out of that speaker relatively easily. Uh, it creates a very non-linear load with your amplifier. And that peak is really what's responsible in most cases for making a speaker have a unique sound when you're playing low end guitar through it. You'll also notice there's a swing on the upper treble end of the spectrum as well. And then at the very beginning and in the middle mid-tone area, you'll see that that's about 8 ohms for an 8 ohm speaker. So the reactive load box actually really matches that. And if we look at the simulation here, you'll see that again, it looks very similar to that actual speaker curve. I originally wanted this to have a little bit more inductance and a lower resonant point. Unfortunately, due to the size of that transformer, that I used to make the big inductor, I couldn't really get it any lower uh, without it saturating, which is a phenomenon where that inductor stops being an inductor and uh, just doesn't really do what you need it to do in this case. 
So why would you want a resistive versus a reactive load box? Well, resistive ones are, like I said, very cheap. And if you're just looking for something to play your amplifier through and put a pair of headphones in, uh, it's a great option. Reactive, on the other hand, is gonna give you that much more realistic sound of a speaker. Um, it's gonna change it's the dynamics of that amplifier a little bit better. Uh, it's gonna sound a little closer to when you mic an actual speaker cabinet. So if you're looking for something that you're actually gonna be recording through uh, for mixing or anything else, it's probably worth the extra money to get the reactive load box to get as close of a realistic uh, speaker characteristic as you can. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you found it a little interesting and uh, you got an example of a DIY load box.